Genentech, Inc., is a biotechnology corporation which became a subsidiary of Roche in 2009. Genentech Research and Early Development operates as an independent center within Roche. As of September 2017, Genentech employed 15,064 people. Topic: History. The company was founded in 1976 by venture capitalist Robert A. Swanson and biochemist Herbert Boyer. Boyer is considered to be a pioneer in the field of recombinant DNA technology. In 1973, Boyer and his colleague Stanley Norman Cohen demonstrated that restriction enzymes could be used as scissors to cut DNA fragments of interest from one source, to be ligated into a similarly cut plasmid vector. While Cohen returned to the laboratory in academia, Swanson contacted Boyer to found the company. Boyer worked with Arthur Riggs and Keiichi Itakura from the Beckman Research Institute, and the group became the first to successfully express a human gene in bacteria when they produced the hormone somatostatin in 1977. David Godel and Dennis Clade were then added to the group, and contributed to its success with synthetic human insulin in 1978. In 1990, F. Hoffman La Roche AG acquired a majority stake in Genentech. In 2006, Genentech acquired Tanix in its first acquisition deal. Tanix had started developing Zolaire, and development was completed in collaboration with Novartis and Genentech. The acquisition allowed Genentech to keep more of the revenue. In March 2009, Roche acquired Genentech by buying shares it didn't already control for approximately $46.8 billion. In July 2014, Genentech Roche acquired Saragon for its pipeline of small small molecule cancer drug candidates for $725 million cash up front, with an additional $1 billion of payments dependent on successful development of products in Saragon's pipeline. Topic research Genentech was a pioneering research-driven biotechnology company that has continued to conduct R&D internally as well as through collaborations. Genentech's research collaborations include: In 2008, Genentech entered into a collaboration with Roche and its subsidiary Glycart to develop Obinutuzumab. In February 2010 Genentech entered into a collaboration with University of California, San Francisco after having worked with them in about 15 other collaborations, this time to collaborate on small molecule drug discovery in neurology. In October 2014 Genentech paid $150 million up front to collaborate with Iowa-based Newlink Genetics on checkpoint inhibitors. In June 2015 it entered into a wide-ranging partnership with the Data Incubator to help train and hire the next generation of data scientists at the company. In January 2015 it signed a $60 million deal with 23andMe that gave Genentech access to the genomic and patient reported data held by 23andMe. In October 2015 it started a collaboration with Nimbus Therapeutics to develop leads from Nimbus in Silico Drug Discovery Platform. In June 2016 Genentech partnered Epizyme to conduct clinical trials exploring whether Epizyme's EZH2 inhibitor metastat would be synergistic with Genentech's atezolizumab. In August 2016, the company began a collaboration with Karmet Therapeutics in which Karmet will discover new candidates and Genentech will develop them. 
In September 2016 Genentech partnered with the Israeli company BioLinerx on a checkpoint inhibitor that Genentech intended to pair with its own atezolizumab. Facilities Genentech's corporate headquarters are in South San Francisco, California, 37.657 degrees north, 122.379 degrees west, 37.657 minus 122.379 Genentech, with additional manufacturing facilities in Vacaville, California, Oceanside, California, and Hillsboro, Oregon. In December 2006, Genentech sold its Porino, Spain, facility to Lanza and acquired an exclusive right to purchase Lanza's mammalian cell culture manufacturing facility under construction in Singapore. In June 2007, Genentech began the construction and development of an E. coli manufacturing facility, also in Singapore, for the worldwide production of Lucentis ranibizumab injection bulk drug substance. <laughs> Genentech Inc. Political Action Committee Genentech Inc. Political Action Committee is a U.S. Federal Political Action Committee PAC, created to aggregate contributions from members or employees and their families to donate to candidates for federal office. Controversy Topic. Disputes In November 1999, Genentech agreed to pay the University of California, San Francisco $200 million to settle a nine-year-old patent dispute. In 1990, UCSF sued Genentech for $400 million in compensation for alleged theft of technology developed at the university and covered by a 1982 patent. Genentech claimed that they developed protropin recombinant somatotropin, human growth hormone, independently of UCSF. A jury ruled that the university's patent was valid in July 1999, but wasn't able to decide whether protropin was based upon UCSF research or not. Protropin, a drug used to treat dwarfism, was Genentech's first marketed drug and its $2 billion in sales has contributed greatly to its position as an industry leader. The settlement was to be divided as follows, $30 million to the University of California General Fund, $85 million to the three inventors and two collaborating scientists, $50 million towards a new teaching and research campus for UCSF, and $35 million to support university-wide research. In 2009, The New York Times reported that Genentech's talking point points on health care reform appeared verbatim in the official statements of several members of Congress during the national health care reform debate. <laughs> Products timeline 1982, synthetic, human Insulin approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, partnered with insulin manufacturer Eli Lilly and Company, who shepherded the product through the FDA approval process. The product Humulin was licensed to and manufactured by Lilly, and was the first ever approved genetically engineered human therapeutic. 1985, Protropin Somatrum, supplementary growth hormone for children with growth hormone deficiency ceased manufacturing 2004 
1987, Activase Alta Place, a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator TPA used to dissolve blood clots in patients with acute myocardial infarction. Also used to treat non-hemorrhagic stroke. 1990, Actimmune interferon gamma 1b, treatment of chronic granulomatous disease licensed to intermune. 1993, Nutripin recombinant somatropin, growth hormone for children and adults for treatment before kidney transplant due to chronic renal insufficiency. 1993, Pulmozyme alpha, inhalation treatment for children and young adults with cystic fibrosis — recombinant D-NACE 1997, Rituxan Rituximab, treatment for specific kinds of non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. In 2006, also approved for rheumatoid arthritis. 1998, Herceptin Trastuzumab, treatment for metastatic breast cancer patients with tumors that overexpress the HER2 gene. Recently approved for adjuvant therapy for breast cancer. FDA also recently approved Trastuzumab for metastatic gastric cancer with HER2 receptor site positive. 2000 TNK's tenecteplase clot busting drug to treat acute myocardial infarction 2003 Zolaire omalizumab subcutaneous injection for moderate to severe persistent asthma 2003 Raptiva antibody designed to block the activation and reactivation of T cells that lead to the development of psoriasis. Developed in partnership with Zoma. In 2009, voluntary U.S. market withdrawal after reports of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. 2004, Avastin Bevacizumab, anti-VEGF monoclonal antibody for the treatment of metastatic cancer of the colon or rectum. In 2006, also approved for locally advanced, recurrent or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. In 2008, accelerated approval was granted for Avastin in combination with chemotherapy for previously untreated advanced HER2 negative breast cancer. In 2009, Avastin gained its fifth approval for treatment of glioblastoma multiform, and sixth approval for the treatment of metastatic renal cell carcinoma. It was most publicized for its approval in advanced breast cancer treatment, but the FDA approval for breast cancer treatment was subsequently revoked in November, 2011. 2004, Tarsiva erlotinib, treatment for patients with locally advanced or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, and pancreatic cancer. 2006, Lucentis ranibizumab injection, treatment of neovascular wet age-related macular degeneration AMD. The FDA approved Lucentis after a priority review six month. Genentech started shipping product on June 30, 2006, the day the product was approved. 2010, Actemra the first interleukin-6 receptor-inhibiting monoclonal antibody approved to treat rheumatoid arthritis 2011, Zelborif for the treatment of a type of skin cancer called melanoma that has spread to other parts of the body or cannot be removed by surgery, and has a certain type of abnormal BRAF gene. 2012, Aravege treatment for advanced basal cell carcinoma BCC. A small molecule inhibitor that targets a key protein in the hedgehog signaling pathway. This is the first approved therapy for advanced BCC.
2012, Pergetta Pertuzumab, for use in combination with Herceptin Trastuzumab, and docetaxel chemotherapy for the treatment of patients with previously untreated HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. 2013, Cadsila Adu the first Genentech antibody drug conjugate ADC to receive FDA approval. It consists of trastuzumab Herceptin linked to a cytotoxic agent mertansine one German mark, used in the treatment of HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. 2013, Gaziva Obinutuzumab, for use in combination with chlorambucil to treat patients with previously untreated chronic lymphocytic leukemia Gaziva is the first drug with breakthrough therapy designation to receive FDA approval. 2014, Esprit an antifibrotic drug for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis IPF. Developed by Intermune, Inc. 2015, Cotelic for use in combination with ZELBORAF Vemurafenib, to treat a type of skin cancer called melanoma that has spread to other parts of the body or cannot be removed by surgery, and that has a certain type of abnormal BRAF gene. 2015, Alicensa electinib, treatment for non-small cell lung cancer NSCLC. 2016, Venclexta treatment for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia CAE, who have a chromosomal abnormality called 17p deletion and who have been treated with at least one prior therapy. 2016, Tocentric first-in-class anti-PD-L1 antibody for the treatment of advanced bladder cancer or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer NSCLC, both after failure of platinum-based chemotherapy. Tocentric was granted accelerated approval for its advanced bladder cancer indication due to promising Phase II results. 2017, Ocrevus the first FDA-approved therapy that treats both relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis and primary progressive multiple sclerosis PPMS. The PPMS form of the disease previously had no approved treatments. Ongoing work, Genentech is working on DR6 blocking and anti-NAP monoclonal antibodies as a potential treatment to delay progression of neuronal destruction in early Alzheimer's disease. To the extent that prevention of neuronal destruction via Dr. 6 and NAP would require ongoing intervention, the effective half-life of any monoclonal antibody treatment would have to be substantial. And CERNA approach against Dr. 6, or vaccine against NAP, may circumvent these limitations. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and recognitions Fortune magazine named Genentech number one on its 2006 list of the 100 best companies to work for. This was the first number one ranking for the company, which has now been on the list for 19 consecutive years. In 2007, it dropped to second place, behind Google. The company ranked fifth in 2008, seventh in 2009, 19th in 2010, 35th in 2011, 68th in 2012, 36th in 2013, 6th in 2014, 9th in 2015, 11th in 2016, and 6th in 2017. The ranking is based on anonymous employee responses to a survey as well as an evaluation of the company's policies and culture.
Genentech was named one of the 100 best companies for working mothers in 2004, 2006 to 8 and 2010 11 by Working Mother magazine. It was named as one of the 100 best corporate citizens 2006 by the Business Ethics magazine. The company participates in various policy and civic leadership groups, such as TechNet, and sponsors independent third-party research and publications, such as the journal Nature. Genentech was named top employer by Science Magazine on October 7, 2010, where it has been recognized for nine consecutive years. In March 2008, Genentech was named Most Admired Pharmaceutical Company by Fortune for the second consecutive year. In July 2010, Genentech was named on the Top 100 Best Places to Work in IT list by Computer World magazine. In December 2008, Glassdoor.com rated the Genentech CEO Arthur D. Levinson as the nicest CEO of 2008 with a 93% approval rating. Genentech was featured in the documentary film Something Ventured which premiered in 2011. The Economist rated Genentech as the most innovative corporation of 2013. Topic: See also San Francisco Bay Area Portal Companies Portal Evan Morris <laughs>